Good evening, I'm Tony Capon, I'm Chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'm calling this meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. May 12th, 2022. This is a hybrid meeting. Some persons are in person, some are on Zoom. The meeting is being recorded. Um, at this point, I request anyone who is not speaking, who is a hand who is on Zoom to keep your mic muted to cut back, cut uh, down on the feedback. Um, want to note a couple of things. We have a new member, uh, Gary St. Bill. He is not here this evening. Uh, he found out about the meeting uh, too late to change his other plans, but he is on wetlands. And we have a, uh, a new Nancy, and that's Katrina. And you all have gotten an email from Katrina. So she's our new land use assistant. Um, I want to uh, note quasi informally for the, for the record that um, Ms. Scanlon, you, you look great. Uh, it's great to see you. And I, you may have a comment to make tonight, do you? you say? Um, I do. Should I do that now or at the end of the meeting? You can do it now. Now? Okay. Um, so I have uh, greatly enjoyed the privilege of working with you all in Ledger. And as you know, I'm expecting a baby in August. And in addition to that, we are moving out of town. So unfortunately, um, we're moving in July. So um, I will be resigning my post after the July meeting. Ooh. Everybody's going to. Uh, it's like going to miss Katie. She's, she's absolutely been a, been a great member, but she's going to be with us for the next two months, maybe because next month, um, being what two months from delivery, Katie's going to Europe, right? Yeah, yeah, and so, um, she may be she hopes to be with us. It'll be, I think, midnight Europe talent time for her, but she hopes to be with us and then she'll be with us in July. Uh, and so we appreciate everything she's done with that. I will move up here to the rest of my agenda. Uh, the record will note that in addition to myself, the other members of the commission who are present are the regular members, Katie Scanlon, Marty Wood, Tom Bodrow, and Paul Artscarver. Alternate members, Jim Arek and Howard Craig. Gary St. Bill is excused. There are no alternates appointed as voting members since all the regular members are present. Also present are Julie Hodge, the town planner, and Katrina Legata, Legata the Land use assistant Tim Ryan, the town council liaison, is excused. Um, before moving on, just for formality's sake, I'd like to request that anyone who wants to speak to identify themselves by name. If you're not a member of the commission or representative of the town, you state your address for the record. I believe there's only, I don't know if there's more than one, but I know Eric is here and we all know Eric, but we'll still need to, to um, state it for the record. Next item on the uh, agenda is citizens' petitions. This is the opportunity uh, for anyone who wants to address the commission on any item not on the agenda. Uh, I see Mr. Treister is here. I assume that is, you want to do it now or you want to do it later? Uh, I know this sounds crazy, but I'd like to do a Pledge of Allegiance first. Sorry? Can we do a Pledge of Allegiance first? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I, that's, that's my fault. I did not catch that's that. important. Yes, I, my error, I have it on my, my cheat sheet. Too. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I should, I'm sorry. I should increase the size of my font so I read better. Uh, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. I bet everyone is going to figure out what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, this is a, a series of questions that I provided uh, to the commission, which is uh, under listed under oops, oops, which is listed under uh, correspondence.
Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Traster. I'm speaking as a private citizen, even though I am a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm also a member of the uh, uh, Assessment Appeals Board. But I'm a private citizen this evening. Uh, Ken Huntington Way. As you know, um, or as you should probably know, uh, I'm opposed to the Public Act 2129 mandates, especially its provisions that allow detached accessory apartments in front yards. The reason I am here this evening is because it appears, based on the agenda, that you may be considering scheduling a public hearing on June 9th to adopt regulations that will implement the mandate. But it does not appear that you intend to consider scheduling a public hearing to discuss opting out of the mandate. Several towns have opted out of the mandates regarding accessory apartments and minimum parking requirements. I've been keeping track of what some other towns are doing regarding the mandate and hope to convince you to amend your agenda this evening to schedule a public hearing to discuss opting out of the mandate before you schedule a public hearing that is intended to implement the mandate. Based on my review of Zoom meetings and minutes, I learned that on March 17th, the New London Planning and Zoning Commission reached a consensus that it would opt out of the mandate. It has not scheduled the, the, uh, its public hearing yet. Uh, the town of Harwinton, Connecticut opted out because under the mandate, there can be no limit. Now these are its reasons, not necessarily my reasons. The town of Harwin opted out because under the mandate, there can be no limit on the number of bedrooms in an accessory apartment could lead to an undue concentration of population and the mandate requires accessory apartments including detached accessory apartments to be allowed by right instead of by special permit the waterford planning and zoning commission voted to opt out because certain elements in the mandate do not afford sufficient control in establishing standards for accessory apartments including provisions for determining unit size detached building heights, and front yard setback standards. The commission also voted to opt out of the mandate because it can better provide for more diverse housing opportunities and protect existing residential neighborhoods in a manner consistent with the POCD by adopting independent standards to govern accessory apartments that do not strictly adhere to all elements of the mandate. The town of Westport opted out because the mandate prohibits imposing a requirement that accessory apartments must be affordable. The mandate prohibits imposing a requirement that attached and detached apartments must have, sep have separate utilities. It prohibits that requirement. The mandate allows the height of a detached accessory apartment to be the same height as the principal structure. The mandate does not allow affordable accessory apartments to count towards the town's 10% threshold goals. And because the mandate conflicts with the town's existing accessory apartment regulations. The Montville Town Council voted to opt out because the mandate does not allow for zoning regulations that would require accessory apartments to be affordable. The mandate permits accessory apartments on any lot where there is a single family dwelling without a special permit or public hearing and makes meaningless any thoughtful new regulations regarding accessory apartments. Old Saybrook opted out because it did not want to allow accessory apartments in some residential districts, and it did not want to allow accessory apartments without a special permit. The East Hartford Planning and Zoning Commission opted out because it wanted to have time to develop appropriate regulations for accessory apartments on various lot sizes that would protect the quality of life of its residents. The town of Chaplin opted out because it believed the state should not be allowed to dictate the town's zoning regulations. So zoning regulations should be left up to the Planning and Zoning Commission, which best knows the wishes of the residents and the rural nature of the town, because apartments do not belong in the town, and because residents should have a say in what the character of the town looks like, not the state. The East Lime Zoning Commission voted to opt out because the town could then adopt its own regulations that can be stricter than those in the mandate. The mandate prohibits the town from requiring any type of relationship between who lives in the principal dwelling and who lives in the accessory dwelling. 
and the act would adversely affect property values. One member said that single family homes are sacrosanct and are one of the reasons people move to the town. The mandate will not enhance the town. The mandate will not address affordable housing. Accessory apartments should require a public hearing. The town should be able to custom fit the regulations and the loosening of restrictions is contrary to zoning and would destroy the rural feel of the town. During the Connecticut River Gateway Commission meeting on January 27th, Mark Brantz, Matt Willis, and Mike Ziska, well-known land use attorneys, advised the town, advised towns should opt out to preserve the flexibility to amend the regulations in the future. Surprisingly, there is little or nothing in your minutes showing that you have seriously considered the merits of opting out of the mandate. However, your records show a significant amount of information, much that I provided, that identifies reasons why opting out would be in the best interest of our town. In my opinion, the expenditure of time, effort, and money to prepare an application and to schedule and conduct a public hearing to adopt regulations intended to implement the mandate without first having a meaningful discussion on the pros and cons of opting out creates the appearance that you are predetermined to adopt the mandate. I hope this is not the case and that you will have a robust discussion this evening to discuss the merits of opting out versus the merits of not opting out. I, prefer to, I, have, I prepared a few questions that might be helpful and there's a copy uh, under correspondence and I also have distributed a copy to the people who are here this evening. Question number one, should the zoning regulations always allow, always allow by right, a detached freestanding accessory apartment on any lot of any size in any district and anywhere within the building envelope, including in the front yard? I believe the answer should be no, which is underlined in the handout. Question two, should the style, size, height, number of bedrooms or the historical status of a principal dwelling be considered in determining if a proposed attached or detached accessory apartment is allowed. I think those items should be considered, which is underlined. Number three, the existing regulations require a duplex to be on an oversized lot and to have a special permit. For example, in an R20 district with 20,000 square foot lots, one four bedroom duplex with two bedrooms per unit requires a 40,000 foot lot. This would result in a density of only four bedrooms per acre. However, under the mandate, two adjacent 20,000 square foot lots could each have a four bedroom single family dwelling and a three bedroom accessory apartment by right. This would result in an overall density of 14 bedrooms per acre. Seven bedrooms on a half acre is equivalent to 14 bedroom density on a full acre. The question is, should the town allow a density of 14 or more bedrooms per acre by right in a single family residential neighborhood? In my opinion, the answer should be no. Not by right. Should a detached accessory apartment have its own electrical service so its residents will not be at risk if the principal dwelling is vacant and its power is turned off? I believe that an accessory dwelling unit should have its own electrical service. Should the zoning regulations require more than one parking space for a three bedroom accessory apartment or more than two parking spaces for a five bedroom single family dwelling? I think that there are some instances where more than two parking spaces for a five bedroom home should be required. And for a three bedroom accessory apartment, I think there should be two accessory, two parking spaces. The existing regular, number six, the existing regulations limit the height of accessory structures, such as storage sheds, to 80% of the height of the principal dwelling or 12 feet, whichever is greater. A typical one-story ranch style home is about 14 feet high. Should the regulations allow a 35 foot high detached accessory apartment by right on the same lot as a 14 foot ranch style home? I do not think an accessory dwelling unit should have the right to be taller than the principal dwelling. 
The existing number seven, the existing regulations allow a single family dwelling to be as small as, small as 540 square feet. Should the regulations require the minimum size of, require the minimum size of an accessory apartment to be more than 162 feet, which is 30% of the size of a 540 square foot single family dwelling? I think the minimum size should be significantly larger than 162 square feet. Should the town have the right to require, town have the right to require an accessory apartment to be affordable? Absolutely, why not? Should Ledger adopt regulations that require the owner of a detached accessory apartment to have his principal residence on that lot? Why not? Reduces the risk of problems, is appropriate in a residential neighborhood. Number 10. The existing regulations do not allow storage sheds or detached garages in front yards, which is a typical constraint in most towns. Should Ledger allow detached accessory apartments in front yards? No, if we don't allow a storage shed in the front yard, why should we allow an accessory apartment in the front yard? Simple, simple question, simple answer. Number 11, and the last question. Should the town retain the flexibility to amend its accessory apartment and parking regulations in the future? Yes. In order to do these things, you have to opt out. If one or more answers, if one or more answers are in the right column, the ones that you circled in the right column, if, if, if there's even one, then a public hearing should be scheduled to discuss opting out of the mandate before scheduling a public hearing to implement the mandate. If all of your answers are in the left column, then there is no need to schedule a public hearing to opt out of the mandate. I urge that you consider amending your agenda this evening to discuss, to have a, a robust discussion on the merits of opting out versus the merits of opting in effectively and uh, act according. I urge that you schedule a public hearing to get the public's input on this important subject. And that's my that's my presentation. Thank you. I would add that the EDC did get some public input on this and sent out in their survey to residents the same question whether they wanted to opt in or opt out. And the, actually, the the results came back that um, more in favor of opting in than were for opting out. But the people that were op wanted to opt out were the folks that have lived in town all their lives yep. and the ones that encouraged opting in for various reasons um, were obviously younger or hadn't been here. It broke it down in so many different ways. So you'd have to look at the survey and I meant to bring that tonight, but they'll be publishing the results of that. I'm going to summarize it for them, but the thought was to uh, opt in. Do you know if it was a random selection of people? Or just, uh... yeah. Sure. It's a random selection of those who chose to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mike Cherry, Five Whipper Wheel Drive. I got a couple items I'd like to address. Uh, recently, uh, the city of New London adopted zoning regulations, text amendment for sale of cannabis. Uh, they conditioned it saying there's no reason not to have the regulations on the books, and the regulations are that you can't have the establishment until you obtain a license from the state. We're six months into our moratorium. Uh, it's probably time to be to consider something and I, I made two copies Julie and what's what's interesting is the total document is four pages long and the regulatory part is one page uh, I think that's probably all we need to do from a zoning perspective and it's, it's for you to consider, but I, I think they've got the right idea. Get out in front of it, get the regs on the books, and then do what they're going to do as far as uh, licensing. I, I'd like to address some of the things Mr. Treister said, not leading to a public debate or discussion, but what I would say is I, I, uh, I would like the commission to spend a lot of time reading what has been provided as a modification to the text amendment to the regulations. Read that, read that against the requirements in 
the, the state statute. There's a lot of things that were relayed tonight that took place in other communities that are wrong and illegal. You can't do some of the things the other towns said they're going to do or why they're going to do it. Uh, it's no longer allowed. Um, so, you know, look at that and, and look at Mr. Treister's questions against the regulations we're proposing. And in my mind, the question comes down to uh, uh, definition. Public hearing is a means to capture information, to hear what people have to provide to the commission. You're gonna have a public hearing on the uh, amended regulation. Uh, if the amended regulation doesn't pass, maybe you'll choose then to opt out, but I, I don't see that one precludes the other at all. Uh, I'll go back to my comment at your last meeting. If you opt out, then what? What's the next thing you do? And, and I disagree with the uh, distinguished attorneys who have been doing this a long time. I don't think failure to opt out precludes anybody from modifying the regulations in the future in accordance with Section 8.3 of the Connecticut General Statute. Mike Cherry's opinion for what it's worth. Yeah, probably not a lot, but I didn't read that anywhere in the statute. Um, I also think the survey provided by Mr. Treister uh, may be a little sophist. It, it may, uh, it may uh, be biased in that it assumes the answer is opt out and hold a public hearing. But once again, a public hearing is a public hearing, not a referendum. So if a lot of people show up online or in person, it's not a matter of counting heads. It's a matter of determining what's best for the community. I'll go back to this August commission in a previous lifetime with different members when we adopted the last set of regs. We spent a lot of time debating attached, detached accessory structures. We spent a lot of time debating uh, in-law apartments versus uh, accessory dwelling units. And we opted to accessory dwelling units by right, not in-law apartments. And, and I don't think uh, when, when uh, Mr. Gardner was here at your last meeting, you had a, a large subdivision being done under 830G. Uh, I had spent some off time with attorney Heller and said, well, what are the possibilities of having more affordable units? Well, the law is pretty specific on the minimum they need and it affects the liability, that, not the, li the viability of the subdivision if, if we were demanding more. Uh, we looked at, I'm going to get the number wrong, I think it's 82J in general statutes talks about giving density bonuses for affordable uh, dwelling unit uh, subdivisions. Uh, we decided not to do that. It may be 82G, I, I, J. Uh, I, I don't believe the town has any right to tell somebody that they need to build something that's affordable on their land. If we so desire to do that, we ought to update our plan of conservation and development, take a hard look at land that the town owns, and look at, at developing affordable housing on that land, where it can be 100% because we own the land. Um, and, and the formula is pretty clear in the statute. It does say, what it says is you, that accessory dwelling units don't count as a dwelling unit when you're trying to figure out if you reach 10%. It doesn't say it can't be affordable. It says it doesn't count in the bottom part of the equation. Uh, and I never could remember if that was a numerator or a denominator, so I, the bottom part. Uh, so, I'm going to debate his survey when you have a public hearing, not tonight. But I, I would enjoy you to read the statute again, read the comments that have been provided from multiple people against what's proposed. And I look forward to the public hearing next meeting. Thank you. Uh, the chair's comment is that we, uh, we did have this discussion, I think, two or three months ago when we decided the course of action would be that we would have a public hearing on the ADUs, uh, then we would see what would happen. Uh, 
there is nothing that precludes Mr. Trees is aware of this because he and, and Ms. Hodge have talked about this. There's nothing that precludes the commission from uh, adopting the ADU regulations and then opting out of 2129. That would then give us the flexibility to deal with specific issues that might arise and deal with those issues only. Uh, what people believe is not grounds to regulate. And my concern is that there has been too much regulation in this town based on belief. We are an evidence-based commission. If we are going to restrict AUs, we're going to allow ADUs and restrict that use. Those restrictions must be based on compelling evidence that the restrictions are necessary to promote the common good, the general welfare, health, safety, be consistent with the plan of, con of conservation and development. Uh, I have heard over the past four meetings a lot of conjecture, a lot of speculation. I have heard no empirical evidence that supports the view that ADUs are somehow not appropriate, that they are somehow harmful. Uh, uh, Mr. Tracer, the former member of the commission, he knows the land use journals. He knows the urban planning journals. They are searchable. I have searched those journals looking for evidence that, uh, for example, ADUs lower property values. I have found no such evidence, and I'm pretty good at looking. Uh, the commission addressed this issue two months ago. We decided what we were going to do. Uh, in the absence of a motion by a member of the commission to reconsider our course of action, we will proceed. Uh, Tony, um, may, I, may I please comment? I apologize for, for interrupting. I don't mean to be rude. Yes, please do. Thanks, Tony. Um, I had asked, um, I'm, I'm very open-minded. So, I mean, it's no secret that that I'm a registered Republican, but I'm actually an independent uh, by thought. So my my uh, considerations are not political at all. They're they're considerations for uh, the best interests of Ledger. So uh, that being said, Tony, um, one or two meetings ago, um, I did ask everybody, including Mike Cherry, uh, what the controversy was, and then um, I had spoken to you, Tony, and uh, you had mentioned that. We could hold a public hearing on an opt out at any time, and so that's why I refrained from any kind of motion. And um, so, uh, so, so that that's one thing. So that's, and I'm not I'm not saying I'm I'm decided either way, but um, the way it was understood was we could have one at any any time. I am open minded, but then um, the other thing, Tony, is. If I understand correctly, and maybe I'm wrong, at the next meeting, um, is it a public hearing on updates uh, to the regulations to include certain aspects of ADU followed by a vote on that? Or did I not understand that? Which is different than 2129. Dave, what is on the agenda for next? for next um, meeting is what should have been on the agenda for tonight, but it did not get noticed properly. That will okay. be the public on ADU. That has already been scheduled. Uh, it, it was formally scheduled for tonight. It has been postponed till the next meeting. We will then also have a public hearing on updating the regs, which is a separate uh, public hearing. So there are two public hearings. Okay, so, um, so my understanding and, and I mean, maybe I don't understand correctly. After the public hearing, um, is there to be a vote um, on incorporating that right after that at the at the meeting, or did I misunderstand that? The if we pass the ADU regulations, the ADU regulations will be by that act incorporated into the regulations. Okay. Effective date. After the effective date, they become part of the regulations, just like any other regulation that we adopt. If we 
failed to adopt the ADU, reg ADU regulations, and those who were opposed to the ADU, ADU regulations will have the opportunity for public hearing to make the same arguments that Mr. Treister is making now. We will then as a committee to decide what we want to do. Okay, so that's different That's different than an opt-out of 2129. Those are two different things. Um, I, I would everybody at this point um, that this discussion end because yes. we have an application before you that is scheduled for okay. public hearing. Okay. Not necessarily you, um, Mr. Albert. I'm okay. Really okay, but Tony, did I get that right though? That's two different things. That's yeah. that's all I have, Julia. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I just don't want this the dialogue back and forth right. about ADUs to continue right. because we're, we have a public hearing coming and that's dangerous. So right, and we're, we're, we're right now we're, then. we seem to be debating right. we're not just the hearing. regulation that we are going to be having a public hearing on next month, and that we is want a pre bias. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not debating. I'm just simply trying to ask. I'm, all I'm asking, and it's a really quick yes or no, um, if you please. Which is, I'm just trying to clarify: is it different than 2129? Sure. Addressing the entire commission right now. Right. So we, can, we should not be having a discussion. Of okay. 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 Mr. Cherry has made his presentation. Okay. That's it. This okay, is not, gotcha. You don't keep getting more bites of the app. I mean, public comment is supposed to be it's not on the agenda, agenda. and technically that application is on, yeah. is on our agenda. But it has not been approved yet. No. The, okay. um, approved. Uh, the, the June 9th date. You have not, oh, you have not, voted, you have not voted on that yet. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, the, the, that uh, is the uh, last date that we could schedule. Uh, right. but, but it has not been voted on. You can still amend the agenda. We we can, and I do not hear a motion to amend the agenda. And we get to that point. If there's a motion to amend the agenda, we will. And uh, did we also recognize that who the voting members are tonight? Yes, I know. I said there are no alternate members. Okay. No alternate Thank members are appointed. Thank you. My last last statement before I do sit down. I'll be very careful not to touch on the on the proposed reg changes. But uh, my questions one through eleven. If you read them carefully. They are very precise, and I stand by every word. So um, I simply ask: Should historic structures be a consideration in accessory and, and, and having an attached accessory apartment? I think the answer should be: They should be considered. If you go forward, that will not be possible. Really? The um, but we're we're back. You're back uh, in no, debating. Let, 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 let me let me finish on one more minute. Okay, this is your Mike, Mike, the apple. Mike Mike brought up the subject of towns requiring accessory apartments to be affordable, and as I said, I said sure. I said, why not, Mike? But it doesn't have to be that way. But you are absolutely prohibited from making from re making that requirement. Okay, I agree. But if you opt out, you can if you wish. Don't have. I agree. Okay. We, we, the, the attorneys, the, those those three attorneys were the leading land use attorneys in the state of Connecticut. Very clear. I can give you the exact date. In fact, I gave you the website so you can listen to it yourself. You can watch it yourself. I, I one in the previous handout. Three leading attorneys in this state recommended that towns should retain flexibility going into the future. You cannot do that if you do not opt out. And if you adopt those regulations first, before you opt out, you have implemented that mandate. No question about it. Be careful. I wish everyone the best, and I've done my best. And, uh, I wish everyone. All right. No, I'll, I'll go. Of course, I. Mike Cherry, five Whipple Drive. I'll just reinforce my last comment. I urge you to go read the public act. Public act things required as part of the regulation included a direct five things on page four if you print out the oil out report i can send them out by email if you wish it only requires five things we move on to mr chair yes sir i'm sorry i uh i have a question for clarification so we wait until the Agenda item brings 
Which which item is it? It's the number of um, references that Mr. Tree gave that had a bit up to that. I think there's 160 some towns. Right, right. there's 169 time, right. uh, towns, but I was asking how many you cited. Uh, every one that I yeah. has opted out or is in the process of opting out. I think he's asking how many. Right. Oh, you just, have to, you just have to go through my hand. Uh, oh. I'm just opting. They're numbered. Yeah. 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 Uh, New London is going to opt out. Yeah, I don't, I don't, my only question. Okay. Two, three, seven. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Did you read that? I only sent out the question on the email. Oh, which one? The okay, thanks. I counted seven on the email. Uh, Harrington, Waterford, Westport, Longsville, uh, Sabra, uh, East it, Hartford. The, the number is less than a dozen. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to agree on that. Thank you. All right, we will move on. Uh, approval of addition or changes to the order of the agenda. Are there any motions to change or any additions of the, to the agenda? I'd like to make a motion just to just for a very, very simple question that I was trying to ask Tony and then someone else, I won't mention names, was impolite by interrupting me. And it's just a very simple yes, no question. Just so I understand, I'm not pre-biased or anything, Juliet. Um, just a simple yes, no question I had. Uh, and that's it. If it's a question, you can ask it. If it's a motion, you're not a voting member. So if you want to ask a question, you can, but you can't make a motion because you are not a voting member. You're an okay. Member. Okay, just a question then. And that's to be on the agenda. Is it a question on the agenda? So okay, like, all right. I guess I guess I guess I was cut off then, but it's kind of something that Eric Eric brought up and you, Tony. So I'm just trying to understand the difference. That's all. But if it's not on the agenda, I guess it, you know, I I can't ask. But it's just something you had mentioned to Eric, so I see a conflict. And that's I'm not saying anybody's right. I'm just trying to understand. That's all. I, I will. You ask me the question. What is the question you want the answer to? Okay, so I'm I'm trying to understand um, what what Mr. Treister is saying is, if the rigs will be adopted, then we can't opt out. But on the other hand, Tony, you had said we could always opt out. So the only question is just for clarification, and that's it. I don't have any follow up. That's all. Just so I can understand. Adopt the regulations. Have the opportunity to then opt out of twenty one twenty nine. Gotcha. The regulation okay. 29. We can then opt out, and that would allow us in the future to change any of the things that we have adopted. We would have to opt out by, by January, 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 whenever it is. Yeah. January. Yes, we can do both. And I apologize. I wasn't cutting you off. I thought we had answered your question, and that I was just trying to then prevent future uh, further discussion in the room. I wasn't actually directing that towards you right. at all. Okay, understood. Okay. We can do both. The question is the order. There's a debate over the order. We should opt out first. I think we can adopt the regulations, then opt out. It's okay. Uh, in any case, without objection, and all the attachments and exceptions, we made part of the official. There are no pre uh, Moving on, public hearings. Moving on to public hearings. Uh, a application is 2-3R consider an amendment to replace the existing zoning regulation section 81 accessory dwelling unit with proposed regulation amendments. The public hearing on this is not properly uh, noticed. Uh, without objection, I will set a public hearing on this application for a special meeting for at 6 p.m. 9th, 2022. This will be prior to planning and zoning. Without without action, that public is set. Item B, 22-4, recent 23 Wellhead Drive Gales Ferry, M63. Uh, 
own five library playing area. Peter and Gardner and 41 Route 12 Gales Ferry for four lot resubdivision. Uh, our zone 43.208. The only action this evening is to receive the application at a public hearing. So, exception or not objection in a public hearing will be set for our regular meeting Thursday, June 9th, 2022. And the regular meeting will follow the special meeting on ADAs. And it should be noted that that's an 830G. Okay, that's being noted. That's an eight application. And I'll notice that. I'll make sure that gets added. Right, it's an affordable housing subdivision. Item C application PC 22 5RA of the Electric Planning and Zoning Commission to consider a comprehensive rewrite of the current zoning regulations. Uh, the proposed regulations are online. Juliet said she will kill some trees and give you a copy if you want. Um, again, the only action for the, this evening is to receive the application and set the public hearing for Thursday, June 9th, 2022, which will follow the public hearing on the previous item. Uh, yes, sir. I expect that that public hearing may last a while. I would think uh, I was going to inform the commission that they should be prepared next month for a We'll bring food or something. Yeah, well, uh, you might want to bring snacks, and it's going to be a lengthy night. And it doesn't have to conclude that night. No. I, I imagine, no. I envision no. it carrying over. Carrying over. Till yeah. And uh, I encourage everyone, all the members of the commission and other interested yes, parties, and I'm sure Mr. Tracer will do so, as will some others, Mr. Cherry has, to look at these regulations carefully. Uh, these are a rewrite, and they're undoubtedly going to be some some things that people are going to catch uh, that we need to change. So it'll be a public hearing, but it will be, uh, it will probably be less formal than the typical public hearing because we're going to encourage people if you find something to please bring it up and we'll talk about it. Or bring it to me ahead of time. Or perhaps you preferably bring it to, if you find something, please bring it to, to Julia ahead of time. And I would also, and, and you'll notice in the packet, application packet that's available online to the to, to everybody, but particularly commission members. So I'm just drawing your attention to it. I included as best I could a summary of the major changes. And obviously I didn't get to all of them. This was this was a wholesale rewrite. It's impossible to redline it. You wouldn't be able to read it. Yeah. Um, so you can look at the high level summary. And uh, if you have questions or want to talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. If you, have, you know, want to go over it. So I can point out a little bit more of, of some of the changes. Um, what did I put something else in there? Is that... No. And if I didn't, I had a slide deck prepared. I'm not sure if that got up there or not. I didn't see it. No, no the, the one that I presented for some people that came to that meeting. So I'll, I'll put that up there too. Just, it was a high level explanation of why I was suggesting these changes and, and some of the planning 101s and things like that. But I just encourage you to look at it as if it's a brand new document. Like, forget the old regs, just pick it up as if this was being proposed, for, zoning was being proposed for the first time in Ledger and try to read through it that way first. And then, then look at the summary and, and jot down your comments and whatnot. All right, thank you. Moving on to old business. Question? Yes, sir. So. Given that we know that that is going to be a long evening, is there any reason why we're having two public hearings on the same evening? Well, we have to for the right. well, we don't have to. It is our regulation. The timelines don't don't apply. Um, uh, I, I think the ADU. That's why we're doing it early. So hopefully we'll get through that. I mean, we can still debate it. It's the same language in the in the proposed mm -hmm. reg change. So we can still debate it, but. Uh, we, I was going to have the A30G application be bumped to July, but I don't, it's, it's a pretty benign yeah. subdivision. It's not asking for crazy 50 lots or, you know, yeah. on a tiny yeah. parcel, it's just four. So we felt that that might go quickly and just get it out of the way rather than make the applicant yeah. wait. And then it is quite, it is likely that we will not get all the way through the second public hearing. We're not going till midnight. No, we have, and you have the fourth. Third, the yeah. fourth Thursday of June that you could do right and July. So right. 
Yeah, so that's it. Rather than rather than making the applicant wait until July, Joel and I, I talked mean, about this. We think that one's going to be a pretty quick public hearing. It, it's a matter of how you structure the, the notice, but right. you may want to just present it, open the public hearing, present it uh, with written comments, with public verbal comments, yeah. and the fourth Thursday of that month, and then mm -hmm. then you get three or four hours instead of trying yeah. to cram it all in, which right. I think would fall asleep. Yeah, and we, we may well We've do that. We've done that in the past and it's worked well yeah. for us. That's a, that's something certainly we consider too. Thank you. We might do that. Thanks, Paul. Moving on to old business. I don't believe there is any. New business, I don't believe there is any. Uh, approval of the minutes. Um, we have two sets of minutes. We have the regular meeting minutes and we have the special meeting minutes. Um, I make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 14th, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Seconded Wood. by Mr. Wood. Any discussion? Uh, if there is no discussion, uh, let me go back here, we'll do. Uh, we still have to do it by roll call. Unfortunately, I can't do all. Of them. Well, actually, you said that. It's unanimous, yeah. it's fine. If it's somebody yeah. says no, then you do it for roll call. Okay. Um, so. You don't really have to do it at all. Okay. Yeah, so um, I can I can use my old standard uh, without objection. Uh, the minutes are accepted as submitted, and and then uh, I'll make a motion to approve the special minute special meeting minutes of 14 April 1920 to 2022. And Mr. Whittle seconded, I assume. Uh, Thank you. Agreed. Sir. Uh, is there any discussion? Anybody have any? Additions, deletions, corrections. If not, without objection, the minutes are approved and submitted. Correspondence, uh, we've already had Mr. Treaster's correspondence and it's been accepted and it's been included in the record. Um, reports, uh, town planners report, Juliet, please. Um, let's see, uh, 34 Village Lane, uh, that's all signed, ready to go for milers to be hopefully filed this time. The reason it was, I guess, withdrawn last time is because they didn't get them in a time. Uh, Bark and Brew has filed their Mylars, uh, so that's good. Um, you know, our, all our grants are, uh, they're moving along, but it's kind of slow moving along. We still haven't figured out how to, to uh, implement the, the sort of second housing rehab program that's funded by ARPA versus um, the state. At BOH. So I'm anxious to get that started because we have, I think, 22 people on the waiting list there. So I've got, gotten two new applications this week alone. Um, I've been quite involved with the sector and their uh, rewrite of my, my baby, the sense, mm -hmm. the update of it. Uh, so that's been good to get back in the, uh, the mix there. Um, we have obviously a, a, hired a, a new land use assistant. Trina um, and Nancy has moved over to Roxanne's position. So we're making progress, I guess. Um, uh, Klaus has made quite a bit of progress. He's working now with Adrian. Klaus is the person doing the GIS map update. Mm -hmm. So he's gotten through all the maps that I've given him and is working with the tax assessor on the pages and pages of the mismatch report. So I'm hoping that that they're going to move through that quickly and then he's going to upload and you know refresh the map so we still can't see the corrections right now but as soon as he's done with that last little bit at least the map will um, be a little bit more accurate um, i do have some ordinances that i'm trying to fix one developing off of the non-town road needs work and then i'm helping I guess it's the Public Works and Land Use Committee mm -hmm. with a park, uh, a, an add on to the parking ordinance to deal with the issue of parking commercial vehicles on the street. See if we can get something in there to prevent that from happening. The zoning official, because he's never able to be here, he's, he's you know, giving me some updates on his on blight. And um, I guess I could have shared, shared that, but sure how personal or private this is but he's you know making progress working his way down the list of the the 
problem children, so to speak. And, um, you know, it's, it's gotten gotten some progress. We have had a lot of people come in. So we sent out all the letters on the STRs and have had probably four people come in very confused mm -hmm. on the process of the special permit. It's quite difficult to explain the special permit, but you have to do all of this stuff, which isn't what it says in the regulations for special permit. So I've asked John to update the the little packet that you used to give out that had the frequently asked questions and whatnot. And maybe we could help figure out that process better. I wish it was just more of a here. Uh, this is the checklist checklist for STR, but you have to have a public hearing and sort of leave it at that rather than trying to navigate merging the two. But um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do have a draft survey from that I want to talk about. Unless you have questions on the on the activity report, but so John Guskowski from our the consultants that's working on us working on the housing plan with us has done a draft survey, and I included that on mine tonight. I don't know if you want. Did everybody see that? Who's on the computer? Anyone? I did not. Yeah, yeah it's under. All right. Well, it, it's up there. Lawyer, plan report. So I would just, if you could peek at that um, in the next couple of days, if there's some another question that you want to ask, or I, I might pop, give it over to you. To, I'll, I'll get to, it off mine and get back to you. Um, you know, I added some questions in red, but basically I wanted to have a better idea of what the feeling was in town about housing and what kind of housing was preferred and where it was preferred and um, what people considered to be affordable or attainable, I did ask him to define those. Um, in North Stonington, we asked the question of where do you see yourself living in five to 10 years? And we had also asked you, like, did you ever live in an apartment? Did you, you know, sort of the progression of folks through their lives. So it was an interesting question. So I added that. Um, but, you know, we can, we, please give me your input and we can add the question and get this out soon. Um, so that's that. So sorry, did you did you say this is something that you're drafting to send out, or it already did go out? I'm drafting to send it out. So I added some questions. So I'm just giving this commission the opportunity to add, add or edit. If there's something you wanted to you know include. Or you don't think is appropriate to include, just let okay. me know. And I'll get it back to John. Any other questions for Julia? Are there any other, other reports, members of other commissions or committees? Julia, do you have anything else? Um, nope. I do have a report from the regional meeting. Okay. Um, so there was again, no quorum. Um, I think we had four or five people there. Um, we also um, will need to appoint a new person from Ledger to attend the regional meeting um, when so I go. Is the regional Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, or what, what is what is you're talking about the COG? Yeah, the quarterly. Quarterly Regional Planning Commission. Yeah, that's that. It's usually held at the COG, so right now. Yeah. yeah, there's still a virtual, but yeah. Um, it was virtual. They couldn't get a quorum. Two for two month, two quarters in a row for half a year. Yeah. That's where I met Mike. Yeah. <laughs> but um the, the general update was that um they've uh they've opened up more training sessions to comply with the um the new statute requiring um uh training for commissioners and through clear and through a couple other resources it seems like it's gonna be much easier for us to be able to attain that. Um so you know they, they did respond pretty quickly to that and uh it doesn't seem like we'll skip a beat. Uh, in meeting those requirements. Um, and in general, are they, uh, all, are, are they hosting training sessions or? 
yeah just you should get in touch with justin um but he has um an updated list of of resources for the for those trainings um and i guess the only the most relevant local news to us is that the large development in Groton that was going in on that uh, property near the oral school, the developers have it currently for sale. Oh, really? Okay. When did that happen? Um, sometime before that last meeting. So within the last month or so. Yeah, I guess they had enough uh, public um, upset or that the developer felt like it was too much of an uphill battle or it got denied or delayed too many times. Uh, yeah, does the COG put on that meeting? Is that a, yes. Yes. It's out of curiosity for me, you know, how, how do you get invited to that? Does the COG put a, a, no, a they, request or, you know, there's what, a, just a standard quarterly meeting? Yeah, it's the, Second it's Tuesday not, so of the, the, the The planners in the region also meet with the COG, the professional planners, but then right. there is a group of uh, members of planning and zoning commissions around the region that the COG asks you to appoint a member and an alternate, and mm -hmm. they all used to meet quarterly. This oh, we used to meet. We used to do, uh, back when there was funding available, we did all the intermunicipal zoning reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, COG staff would do it and then teach us what was being done in other communities. That's why I learned a lot of what is in our zoning regs because I stole it from other people. Um, but it somehow fell out of favor when the funding went away. Mm. Uh, but it was a good forum to find out. You know, New London passed new cannabis regulations. Uh, they're really pretty simple. It's one page long. Gee, let's look at that. And you, you know, I'd come back and go find those regs or call Julie and say, hey, I, I can't find those regs. It was a good forum for commissioners. Yeah, we, we've had discussions around agricultural regulations, um, the accessory dwelling units, um, the um, short-term uh, short rentals, thank you. And um, just in general, you know, uh, local, you know, regional concerns such as uh, traffic patterns and water quality and things that are just happening with local grants that that are you know tying our communities together because we do live so close so it is good spent a lot of time on affordable housing talking to east lion going okay what's new in, in the latest court decisions <laughs> and uh you know it helps it helps i've got a great idea of how you can get invited we could appoint you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was going to put my sector hat on and go to the you cog. Can. And I mean, there's a, a, a public meeting. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, go to both. And that can you add sure. Paul's email to Justin's list, and at least you'll get a notification. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, cool. And you can kill two birds at one stone. There, you can be our. I used to kid. go as a professional planner <laughs> under the guise that nobody from our commission wanted to go, so I would go. And I actually, no one from the public has ever attended. Is it a representatives only or is it open to the public? Public meeting, we, we, we had, I think at one point we had one person show up when we were working on the regional plan of conservation and development. Um, it, it had been done by staff and then we had to endorse it. And that was part of the public hearing process. And somebody actually came to talk about it, which was surprising. Is that not correct? Hmm. I guess it's just to me as a because part of your sets is to <laughs> yeah. Well, I like the old sets because okay. Ledyard was in really good shape. <laughs> no, it was it was set up for commission members to discuss specifically planning issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, at one point. You look at the history of where the COGS came from, it was the municipal planning road. You know, when uh, when all the players that formed it left, uh, we lost a lot of this. The only guy still there, I think, is Karen, right? 
Mm. And he's retiring. Yep. Uh, 1992. Yeah. Oh, I've read the study. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there is no other business, we are adjourned until, well, we're adjourned, and then we'll be back at uh, 6 p.m. on June 9th for an evening of public hearings. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Do the OPM listing of training. Thank you.